Every year, the AUA has delivered innovative, evidence-based, quality education for urologists and urologic healthcare professionals around the world. This year is no different. Welcome to the 2021 AUA virtual meeting where you will have direct access to all the latest in urology, be able to engage and connect with your colleagues and other attendees from all corners of the globe, and have access to hundreds of hours of content on the latest in your specialty. My name is Atria Godfrey, and I am here to bring you the latest at the 2021 AUA virtual meeting, share with you some exclusive interviews, as well as take you on a tour highlighting the organizations leading in the field of urology. Before we get started, take some time to get to know the platform so that you don't miss out on any of the exciting work being shared during this year's meeting. Connect and engage with your colleagues, build your schedule according to your interests, and access all of the on-demand content if you're not able to attend the live session. Now, let's kick off today with an exclusive interview with the AUA president, Dr. Scott Swanson. And we're joined now in the studio by Dr. Scott Swanson, AUA president. Dr. Swanson, thank you for your time today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a real pleasure. So what has the past year been like for the AUA? Oh boy, oh boy, I think it's safe to say it's been pretty disruptive. If, if you look at a personal individual effect, it's affected everybody's lives. If you look at the practice of medicine, if you look at the effect it's had on members' practices, whether they be academic or employed physicians or private practice, if you look at the uh, educational offerings, uh, we've gone from physical to virtual. So I think you can say, safely say that it's been a pretty dramatic effect. And with that, what are you most proud of the AUA accomplishing in this past year? Well, I'm proud of the AUA. I'm proud of the members. You know, they have demonstrated uh, a significant amount of leadership and resilience and grit to manage all of these things, whether, again, it's on a personal basis, a practice basis, or the uh, national basis. I'm really proud of the way that urologists have responded. Uh, that goes for the AUA. Uh, it goes for our speakers. It goes for our moderators. It goes for the employees that we have at headquarters. So what will you be covering in your upcoming presidential address? Well, past presidents have talked about innovation or they've talked about science or they've talked about research or they've talked about, you know, any number of things. And uh, the, the thing that's uppermost in everybody's mind this year was COVID and the effects of it. And I didn't really want to focus on COVID because I think the response, again, the leadership, the resilience, the grit, the response that individual members have had and that the organization has had, I think, is the real story. And finally today, what excites you about the future of AUA and why should members be excited as well? Well, I think, you know, we got off to a pretty good start with uh, over 100 years of existence. We've been blessed with good leadership. We've been blessed with people who have, who have set up the value train for the AUA, that is education, research, and advocacy. Uh, we've been appropriately uh, stewarding our resources for years and years and years and years so that we can weather things like this. Um, even we've developed three new um, initiatives during this last year, which I think is amazing. Humanitarian efforts, whether it's in the United States or internationally, were very important. And a lot of our members have participated uh, in humanitarian efforts. But this year, we started a process where we identified an award winner. This year, it's Catherine DeVries. We identified two grant recipients that are going to use those funds to further their um, experiences, uh, both, again, internationally and nationally. The second one that I'm particularly proud of is the Diversity and Inclusion Task Force that's going to help foster diversity and inclusion at the AUA level, both in the urology community, but also in the AUA itself. And then lastly, we created a Business in Urology Task Force to help our members respond appropriately to different compensation models and to be a little more savvy in the way that uh, the businesses are run. Dr. Swanson, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Each day of the meeting, we are going to be highlighting organizations, universities, and medical centers that are at the leading edge of urologic care. Today, we start with the Simulation Innovation Lab at the University of Rochester Medical Center, where their stepwise approach to surgical training, robust simulation program, resident research commitment, and a forward-looking education mission makes it one of the ideal programs for resident training and education. Let's take a closer look. 
we seek to innovate so we can excel in how we care for patients, how we advance research, and how we educate the next generation. Our goal is to train the complete urologist. Our platforms allow surgeons to not only train in an established technique, but learn new techniques which will benefit both the surgeons and our patients. We seek to advance our research to further our field. Our commitment to education is never ending and we are investing in technology to enhance our residents' experience. Our simulation program is second to none. It's set up for the residents to succeed. Goal is to move the needle in urology in the country and in the world. One of the biggest examples we have is building of very realistic organ models that are both generic or patient-specific for surgical practice. We have a vision of being able to develop a state-of-an-art training center that allows us to train surgeons in a variety of techniques, whether they are established techniques where surgeons need to improve their outcomes, or whether they are novel techniques that are being introduced on a daily basis to the surgical field. Next, we head to the Queensland Bladder Cancer Initiative, an expansive program which aims to improve the clinical outcomes and lives of patients with bladder cancer. The initiative covers all aspects and stages of bladder cancer with community education, advocacy and support for patients to basic and translational research and clinical trials. Bladder cancer is one, what we call a forgotten or orphan cancer. One of the main issues with bladder cancer research is that it's very poorly funded and supported by funding agencies. And so our aim is to really highlight the importance of this disease, which is really a very deadly disease in certain circumstances. The QVCI is an inclusive program encompassing early stage disease all the way through to advanced, looking at translational research, clinical trial activity and advocacy for patients. The QBCI is aimed at supporting patients through their journey with bladder cancer, whether it be low grade or high grade, all the way through to advanced disease, with education support, clinical trial activity, and cutting edge technologies. We're also training the next generation of clinician scientists through our work with junior doctors who are aiming to work in the field of bladder cancer and urology. Now, let's continue our tour of teams leading in urology and urologic care. The Department of Urology at the University of Washington has always been a leader in simulation science. While the prestigious academic center continues to level up its expertise, researchers are also looking at how these safe spaces will be key in integrating artificial intelligence into clinical care. Simulation has really uh, taken on more and more of a role in healthcare and providing both individuals as well as teams the opportunity to practice in a safe environment. Patients tachycardic. University of Washington uh, has historically been a leader in the field of simulation. We are an academic medical center and we wanted to develop not only uh, innovation in learning and training, but also research. Simulation obviously takes on many forms. And for our department, one of the most tangible is our simulation initiative for our residents, which we call Eurysti. When you are working with a group in the simulation center, uh, you definitely build trust between the members of those teams. Part of the science of healthcare simulation is to show and publish that your programs actually impact the mission to improve the health of the public using simulation science. The mission of the Division of Urology at the UT McGovern Medical School is to integrate current evidence-based, patient-centered care, cutting-edge advances in urology and research science into the daily care of their patients. Let's take a closer look. For being a small department, uh, as compared to other larger institutions, I think we have very high caliber research here. One that is very exciting uh, is Dr. Canfield's research of gold nanoparticles to treat prostate cancer. The future of prostate cancer treatment is going to be focal therapy. And so I'm working for all of my patients who, who know uh, there are better things on the horizon 
better things to be offered and better treatments coming. The technology is innovative because it's, it's unique. We, we are putting a inert nano shell in the human body and then lighting it up with laser energy to create you know, cell death. For types of cancer, like prostate cancer, that require a very ultra-localized approach, this approach is absolutely ideal. It is so non-invasive to the patient that it's really, it's really game-changing. That's all for us today, but be sure to check back each day of the meeting to view more exclusive content from this year's AUA Virtual Annual Meeting. If you didn't have a chance to catch the live sessions, make sure to go to the On Demand section in the platform, and don't forget to complete program evaluations and claim credit for your participation. We'll see you tomorrow.